Very good. Well, welcome everybody to this Doug meetup um, hosted in Kenya. Uh, very excited to have all of you here today. My name is Liz Hallen. I am the vice president here at Dynamics User Group. Before we jump into the fantastic content um, that is been put together for you, I just wanted to go over a little bit about Dynamics User Group, who we are, what we do, in case you've not heard of us before. We are a free community um, that is global, and we offer multiple different products and um, services that are free and available for all of you to use in hopes of allowing you to educate yourselves and just help yourselves personally and professionally. Um, we do this in a variety of different ways, and this has allowed us to grow our free community to over 42,000 members worldwide. Um, so thank you all for being a huge part of, of that number and of this community. So we are here as a on a Doug meetup. Meetups is just one of the programs that we host, and we offer free meetups around the globe. And um, I believe we have 40 groups today across nine countries. So thank you for being one of our countries. In addition to meetups, we also offer free webinars. This is all free educational content, and we focus only on the Microsoft Dynamics 365, Dynamics GP, and the Power Platform products. So you'll see our all of our programs do focus on those areas. We also offer online discussion forums for you to continue conversations when you're not meeting in person or virtually. Our YouTube channel has a very robust lineup of content. We have almost 700 videos hosted on our YouTube channel. These are all educational in nature on the core Microsoft and Power Platform products, and including even um, today's Doug Meetup is also hosted there, along with all of your past events that you've had. Um, so some really great content there. And if you are a customer and you're looking for solutions or services to extend your product, um, feel free to check out our team up partners. Our team up partners are one of the ways that we help to fund our organization. So we're very grateful and thankful for all of them. And last but not least, our conferences. You might have well known, we're probably most well known for our conferences of Dynamics Con Live and Dynamics Con Virtual. Um, I know it's a bit of a, a trip for all of you to be able to join. We are hosting our next Dynamics Con Live in-person conference in Denver, Colorado, here in the United States. I do have a $100 promo code for you there. We will have over 220 sessions, um, again, all on the products that are listed here on the left. And we'd love to see you there in the Mile High City um, on May 13th through the 16th, if you're able to join us. We do have our call for sessions open right now. It actually closes tomorrow, November 30th. Um, so if you are planning on coming over and would like to get a free pass, um, all of our speakers get free admi admission to the event. And if you're not able to travel quite that far, um, I am excited to tell you that we are continuing our Dynamics Con virtual event. Our next one will be next November. And we have had, in the past have seen several thousand community members join us. And this event is really special because it is truly chosen by the community. So each of you have an opportunity to submit session and topic ideas to be presented. And then once we have received all those submissions, we allow the community to vote on all of the submissions. And the top voted sessions are the ones that you will see on the day of the event. Our session submissions will open probably in April of 2024. Um, so if you are a member a free of our of your free membership with Doug, you'll definitely get email communications when that time has come. So again, thank you all so much for being here, and I'm going to turn it over to Francis, who can um, introduce our speaker for today. So thank you so much for having me, and welcome. 
Okay, thank you, Liz, for that brilliant yes. introduction about Dynamics User Group. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Liz is a very supportive member to our group, and she is always mostly here with us for most of our meetups. So uh, straight to it. So today we are looking at uh, we are exploring Business Central and Finance and Operations. These are two major ERPs, but we need to know. Uh, when to choose which, what are the features that are contained in Business Central versus Finance and Operation. And the speaker today will be Mr. Steven Gigi, um, who is a functional consultant uh, for Business Central and Financial and Operations for Impacts Business Solutions. And he will be helped, or they'll be do it together with his colleague, Hezbon Nyambane, also a functional consultant for Finance and Operations. So I'll hand it over to the two, the team of Mr. Stephen Gigi and Mr. Hezbon Nyambane. Guys, take it over. Yes, thank you so much. Good morning and good evening for each and everyone from wherever you are. Uh, uh, come from Biz Impacts Business Solutions. We're going to be sh showcasing you uh, the walkthrough of uh, the different kinds of uh, the business central and the finance, finance and operations, the different modules, what is contained in the finance and operations that is not contained in uh, business central. And uh, we can be able to delve in into the question and answers and also give an interaction uh, as we con uh, within the conversation. Uh, I'm joined with my colleague, Hezbon Nyambane, who will share his screen and will be able to uh, kickstart the meeting and showcase us on the finance and operation. And then we'll be able to uh, dial in into the conversation. Welcome, Hezbon. Ah, OK, uh, thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, how are you? How is everyone? And um, I think then I'll proceed to share my screen. I'm hoping that you're able to see my screen. Are you able to see my screen, Tim? Yes, you can. Yes. yes. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I want to take you through uh, uh, Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations. Then we will thereafter have a look at uh, at uh, Business Central. So as uh, as uh, as it was introduced, um, we, these are the two major ERPs, and uh, we want to highlight some of the key features uh, as per uh, the two ERPs that you are talking about today. So um, D365 Finance and Operations uh, has this kind of uh, arrangement. So this is the, the landing page. On the right here, these are the workspaces. These are workspaces. I know we have some of the workspaces in Business Central as well. So these are workspaces. And of course, the essence of workspaces is to group uh, similar functionalities together, like aggregate uh, related functionalities on the left here, just uh, uh, an arrangement of icons. From the very top, uh, we have our home icon. We have favorites. Favorites are uh, functionalities that you routinely access. For example, if I'm an AP or accounts payable accountant, then I'll have things to do with accounts payable under favorites. So when I want to access uh, those functionalities i don't have to go back to the modules and uh, start <clears throat> pressing them because that is uh ideally uh trying to save on time the other one here is on recent anything that, that any form or any menu item that you open then you'll find it under the recent uh workspaces or functionalities the next one is on the workspaces the workspaces are similar to what you have on the right and then on the uh, below the workspaces are the modules that we have, the key modules that we have within uh, Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations. So what are these key features? What are the differences between uh, 
this one Fendo and Business Central. I'll begin. The very first one, the glaring one, is uh, there are some modules which are there in D365 Finance and Operations, and they are not there in Dynamics 365 Business and Business Central. So what are the, some of those modules? The very, the very first module is this module we call Credit and Collections module here. It's a whole module, Credit and Collections module, which is there in Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations, but then uh, it is not extensive in Business Central. In Business Central, it's just a small, a small section where you define the credit limits for customers and just the validations. But in D365 Finance and Operations, it is a complete module with uh, certain functionalities which I want to run you through very, very quickly. So I'll just collapse this. And uh, I want to begin from uh, the customer master data. When you go to the customer master data for credit and collections, there is a section here where you define uh, the credit management parameters, which is a bit extensive now in terms of coverage. So I'll go down. There is a section here called credit and collections. Okay. So this area here is very detailed to the extent that it gives you uh, a credit limits um, uh, to a detailed manner. So what is this detailed manner that I'm, that I'm talking about? So we have a section here where you can define your credit limit. Okay, you can say the credit limit is that uh, that amount. There is another section here called insurance and guarantees. You can define insurance and guarantees. Okay, if you have an, an arrangement with a customer where they submit the insurances or guarantees uh, to stand in for them in terms of the credit uh, management or credit tolerance, then there is a section where you can find insurance and guarantees which you don't have uh, in Business Central. And uh, there's another thing here and gets to the credit, and, uh, credit uh, management module. Uh, there is a section here where you can define the credit limit expiration date. Okay. We have uh, credit limit uh, review dates. All these things are available. Eligibility criteria for credit, credit management. The account status. Okay. So these are some of the parameters which have been um, which have been provisioned as additional configuration to credit management capabilities within D365, which are currently in D365 finance and operation, but then they are not there in business central. So that's the very first thing. The other section is uh, this tab here where you have credit management, and then there is a risk, a risk score here where you'll be able to uh, classify your customers based on the risk exposure. So you go in and define certain parameters which are going then to define, which are going to uh, help you uh, compute the risk exposure based on the uh, credit limit that you are going to allow your customers to hold. And based on that risk score, then you'll be able to see how the various customers are performing. And then from there, uh, that information will help you to determine how much in terms of the credit limit you are going to allow these customers to hold. And then we have a section here for temporary credit limit, which we also don't have in Business Central. And then now this is the area where now you define your insurances and guarantees. You go and find the insurer with the insurer, okay, what is the coverage type, the identification, which is now the insurance number, <clears throat> effective date, expiration date, the value of that insurance or guarantee, and the currency, and all those, okay? So that section is available in f and The other thing that is also very, very uh, glaring is um, what we call the blocking rules, okay? There's a section here that we call the blocking rules. So the blocking rules are additional parameters as well that then help you control how transactions are going to be processed. You have customers whom you allowed yourself to uh, buy on credit, okay? So 
you need to control certain uh, certain uh, you, you need to have some certain metrics that then will help you determine how you process uh, subsequent transactions to those customer accounts. For example, we have a customer that we've said um, this customer should settle their invoices within a number within a certain number of days based on the payment terms that we have with this uh, customer. Okay, so should they violate that, then the next transaction, the next uh, orders or invoices should be placed on hold. And that's why we have this parameter, for example, called days overdue. Days overdue, um, <clears throat> you define days of overdue based on a group of customers or on a single customer based on how many days certain invoices have gone overdue or how many days the, those the invoices have run overdue. So that is a parameter that is currently in place as well. There is another parameter here, which is account status, where you can block uh, subsequent customer transactions when, um, or based on the account status, okay? If an account is on hold, for example, you can say that should not allow transactions to go through. There is that uh, parameter in place as well. Terms of payment, uh, you can have that one as well. Configured, credit, credit limit expired, okay? You've allowed yourself to, you've allowed your customers to buy on credit, okay? So should this credit limit expire, are, they sti are we still supposed to process certain orders? Are we still supposed to process subsequent invoices or orders? No. So this is the area where you define where um, that configuration is going to apply and the tolerance in terms of the number of days after which the credit limit has expired. We have another parameter here, which is called overdue amount. Okay, the overdue amount now is uh, where you define the thresholds uh, that should the amount go up above a certain threshold, then the subsequent orders to these customers should be placed on hold until they are approved. The next one here is sales order. You can place certain orders or invoices on hold until they're fully approved or until maybe the customer comes out to clear uh, their credit uh, worthiness. And then the last one here is credit limit utilization. Utilization, where now you go and define how much in terms of threshold is going to be considered before uh, subsequent orders will be placed on hold. So. Um, just to conclude on this module, there are quite a number of features, but I was just trying to highlight the key ones which are there in F and O, and they're not there in Business Central. So as I, as I, as I, as I discussed earlier on, there, there is a risk classification, okay? As you can see here, risk classification, of course, now where you're going to uh, reclassify your customers based on the risk exposure. And then there are scoring groups. Of course, the scoring groups are, are now the brackets where you then now group your customers based on the risk, risk exposure or the risk classification, which is aimed at essentially helping you compute um, the credit limit worthiness of a certain customer, for example. Okay, and then we have a section there for insurance and guarantees. And then I'll go left here. There is a place called credit holds, which is also very, very important just to highlight. Okay, let me just open it. Unfortunately, we don't have any transaction here. But then what happens is this, uh, when you are, okay, if a certain customer account has violated any of the blocking rules that we've discussed, when you try to process the next order or invoice or shipment, then that order will be placed on hold, okay? And if the order is placed on hold, it will come to this workspace here, awaiting clearance through either an approval or by the customer coming to sort out their credit worthiness. Okay. And if that happens, then we have all these options at the top here. We can release this order, we can reject this order, or we can evaluate to confirm if the customer has really sorted the, uh, the credit issue, credit worthiness issue or if the internal team within the organization has decided otherwise and 
approved the order that is then going to go through whether it has violated the credit limit or not. So this is the section where the approvals will happen once those orders or invoices have been placed on hold. Remember, I've been talking about uh, placing orders or invoices on hold. So this is the section where all the orders will come, will be lumped up, awaiting evaluation to confirm if they've been able to meet the criteria before then they can be released or before those shipments can be uh, released. Okay. So I'll go to, I'll go to the next one. Um, so that is a module that is there in FNDO, a whole module that is there in FNDO that is not there in Business Central. The next one is uh, asset management module. There is a module here called asset management, which is in the three finance and operations, but then it's not there in Business Central. Okay. So under asset management, we have a section where you define all the assets. So there is this module for asset management. And then there is a, another module here for fixed assets, two modules for fixed assets in FNDO. This one is there in Business Central because this is where then you go in and find or basically execute all the financial transactions of uh, relating to fixed assets, acquisitions, depreciations, revaluations, write-ups, write-downs, disposals. Those ones will be executed under this module <coughs> fixed assets module. But now we have an additional module here, the asset management module. So all the assets that you've maintained here can be transferred to the asset management module. The essence of the asset management module is to give you a platform, kind of a workshop, where then you'll be able to perform the maintenance activities on, this, on those assets that you maintain in your fixed asset register, okay? So this is, uh, as you can see under assets, we have all assets where all those assets will be maintained. So this is the register. But then these are maintenance assets, which are tagged to the financial fixed assets. And then we have another section here called the functional locations. The functional locations, this is where now you define the various locations within your premises where all those assets will be located or situated. If you have branches, if you have regions, divisions, locations, all those ones will be defined under the functional locations. And then we have what we call the maintenance requests. So here, a maintenance um, process will be initiated by what you call a maintenance request. So the process starts, starts, by, uh, starts from a maintenance request. So we have a, a technician, we have a user. For example, we have a driver, okay? We have a driver and then they feel like um, one of the cars, one of the vehicles, that they are using currently as an issue. So they'll go into the system, log a maintenance request. So the maintenance request initiates the maintenance process. Once the maintenance request has been received in the back office, it will be converted to what you call a maintenance work order. So a maintenance work order is the one that then will be used to record the number of hours, okay, that that maintenance process will take. The maintenance costs, that will be incurred by the technicians who will be processing those maintenance work orders. Um, any miscellaneous charges that will be incurred as well. And then any downtimes, maintenance checklists, okay? Such kind of, uh, such kind of uh, documentations that will also be required while uh, performing the maintenance um, activity on a certain asset. Things like, um, uh user guides right maintenance user guides maintenance uh, checklists all those ones will be <clears throat> dressed under what you call the maintenance work orders so once a maintenance work order has been closed and the journal has been posted then all those costs will be will be updating our ledgers so all these modules are integrated of course so if we post a, a journal from the maintenance work order then we expect that to update our specific ledgers in the general ledger module. So that will complete uh, a maintenance process, but then we have additional features, additional features uh, relating to preventive maintenance. What is preventive maintenance? Preventive, preventive maintenance is where you will go in, define predictive 
maintenance schedules. For example, things like uh, buildings, okay, those are fixed assets, but then they could they may they may be having a, a structured uh, maintenance schedule where maybe it occurs uh, maybe four four times a year, maybe twice a month. You know, those are kind of predictive. And uh, if they're predictive, then there is a section here where you can come in and define ma predictive maintenances. And then now the system automatically will create maintenance work orders for you. So you go into the system and then get maintenance work orders when uh, those uh, maintenance schedules or planned maintenance schedules fall due. So you don't have to do the manual work of raising the maintenance requests, converting those maintenance requests to the work orders, no. The system now will be able to predict or will be able to listen in. And once those plans have been reached in terms of the reset timelines, then the system will automatically trigger uh, work orders, notify you through an email, and automatically uh, trigger those maintenance requests and work orders automatically in the system for you. There are also quite a number of uh, aspects so that you can look at this module. It has what you call the fault management. Okay, so there is a fault management section here, fault designer, fault symptoms, the fault areas, where now you'll be able to keep track of how certain assets are responding to certain faults. Okay, and then generate reports and schedules based on that. Okay, so this is a whole module uh, that is there in FNO that we don't have in Business Central. Okay which has quite a lot, as you can see, are the warranties, uh, a, a spare part control. We have a section for spare part control as well, okay? Because it's kind of a workshop, eh? Spare part management and control. And then the cost control uh, per bomb, okay? Per KPI. And then we have a section here where we, we, we maintain the asset counters. Asset counters are very applicable when it comes to certain assets, like. Uh, like motor vehicle, okay, where you want to keep track of uh, a mileage and then now determine uh, the subsequent uh, maintenance schedules based on those counters. So you have a section for that as well. And then we have direct procurement that you can initiate from here without necessarily going to the procurement module. So while under this module, there is a section for procurement where you can initiate procure, work order uh, purchase orders and purchase requisitions directly from, from this section here. So if you're doing a work order, you're executing a work order, then you realize there is a, there's a missing spare part. So you just raise a procurement or trigger procurement activity directly from this module. So that is on the asset management module. And then there is another module here called uh, expense management module that is quite detailed in this ERP. And what are the features? Uh, it gives you quite a diverse uh, coverage in terms of functionalities. So this is the section where you'll be able to um, give your employees um, capabilities or basically accessibility of the system for them to be able to apply uh, for cash advances. And then expense and claims. Basically, once you've given them cash advance, they'll be able to expense it uh, after utilization. Uh, there's also a section where now they'll be able to make claims okay for any amount that they've utilized uh, which they then they need to be refunded or reimbursed there is a section here for expenses okay and then um we also have a section for travel advances okay you have a team or basically your staff are traveling and uh, you want uh, to keep track of that in terms of uh uh, the timelines for those travels and how much you're spending in terms of those activities. So there is a section here uh, or a functionality here where then you'll be able to uh, allow your employees to raise their travel advances or travel requests and for, 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 for the team, for the finance team then to be able to disperse uh, in gets to those or basically to fund those travel activities. Okay. And then we have a section here uh, called expense report. Expense report can be used to account for the travel advances as well as the cash advances here. So you've advanced them, and then now they are coming back to 
uh, to, to, to account for how much then you uh, advanced them. So this is the section here where then the team will be able to submit uh, their expense reports from. Okay, let me move a bit fast. I see uh, time is moving a bit fast. So um, this module here uh, has a section for credit management as well. There is a section here for credit card management. I know this is part of the key features which an ERP should have. And uh, um, I want to mention that this is indeed the six five, but then in Business Central, uh, the functionalities are quite um, shallow in coverage. Okay, so we have a section here for credit card management. And then um, lastly, a section here for per DMs and a bit of setups. So this is also another module uh, that is in this is five finance and operations. I'll move to the next module. The next module is um, the next module is uh, the budgeting module. So the budgeting module in D three five finance and operations is quite extensive. So it gives you two aspects of budgeting. So we have basic budgeting and budget planning. Okay, two sections, which are not there in Business Central. In FNDO, you, uh, the team will go in, the budgeting team, the finance team will be able to go in and do uh, budget planning. Budget planning involves preparing budgets from the lowest levels, from the preliminary levels, departmental levels, section levels, and then that budget will roll up. So bottom up, the budget will roll from the bottom all the way to the top, which then will be adopted at the, as the organizational budget. So the budget planning section is the section where the team then will be able to define or basically capture those budgets from the lowest levels. If we've, defined, if we, if we've set up our organization to have maybe uh, departments and then under departments we have maybe sections and then under sections we have maybe uh, certain cost centers. So the budgets will be prepared from the lowest levels which are the cost centers and then it will roll up to the sections and then roll up from the sections to the departments. And then now the departments, of course, will consolidate and aggregate those budgets to be adopted as the organizational budget. So that is the essence of the budget planning um, capability or basically functionality here. And then uh, basic budgeting here now is where once all these budgets have been aggregated, will now consolidate to form the organizational budget, which will then be tracked under basic budgeting here. And for basic budgeting, uh, there is a section here where we have entry forms, where the users will be able to capture their transactions. So for basic budgeting, they'll be able to do that through budget register entries here. So this is where the team will go in, okay? And be able to keep track of those budgets or rather actually go in and be able to uh, revise the budgets, amend the budgets, transfer the budgets, which have been processed from the pre preliminary levels if the organizational policies support that. You could find the budget remains the same, yes, but then we need uh, inter-account transfers, which we can't run away from. So if that happens within an organization, then uh, that is where now uh, the entry forms, like the budget register entries and the budget plans will come into play for the user to be able to go in and process those transactions as appropriately. So that's another module uh, that is uh, quite advanced in this five finance and operations, but then it's not there in, it is there in Business Central, but quite shallow, doesn't have all these capabilities. There are quite a number of reports, of course, where you'll be able to report budget versus actuals, budget balances in terms of the budget control statistics, how the, how the various budget lines performing, budget plans in terms of how much? So we have quite a number of reports in relation to that module. Question? Okay. All right. So that's another module. Uh, let me proceed. Uh, I'll move a, a bit first. We have another module here called the project management and accounting module. So for the project management and accounting module, it's also quite diverse here. And uh, I'll just open to allow me to open two windows for this module. So 
So for this module, uh, we have uh, these stages, uh, project, uh, planning for the project, and then managing the project in terms of the costs. And then we have a section here for cost control and reporting. So these are the project st stages where you do project planning, managing uh, costs around project transaction processing. And then we have a section here for uh, cost control and reporting. So this mod module in DFIS 5 Finance and Operation is quite extensive. It has quite a number of features, which I'll highlight quite, quite quickly. So I want to open another window here, where now uh, I want to have two windows where I'll be able to explain in detail, uh, also being cognizant of the time. So we have a section here for main management of project resources. Okay, resources which are assigned to projects in terms of uh, tools and personnel. So there's a section for management of that here. Okay, yeah, let's carry on, sorry for that. Yeah, so we have a section here for resource management, and then we have a section here for item requirements management, uh, tools and materials that we are going to utilize in those projects. And then we have a section here for timesheets, okay? Timesheets, uh, project uh, grants, a section for project grants. All these things are not there in Business Central. We have a section here for project quotations, okay? Uh, a section here for project quotations. Project invoice processing, we have a section for that. And then we have a section here for processing of project related transactions in terms of uh, how, has, how much hours have been spent on a certain project, expenses, how much in terms of um, in terms of amounts have we spent on a certain project, how uh, in terms of utilization of the items, okay, stockable items. How is this faring and get to a certain project? And then we have uh, a fees. So this is also another journal, which then gives you um, a, an additional uh, feature for you to process project fees. So these are journals that you can process on a certain on a certain project. And then on top of that, we have quite a number of reports which are related to projects, uh, project profit and loss reports. We have uh, project hour rate reports, uh, resource. Uh, how are a rich report, resource utilization reports, quite a number of reports for this module. Uh, I think in the interest of time, uh, let me just um, yeah, move a bit uh, first and uh, I'll be a bit brief. Uh, the other module, uh, which is also very, very key here is uh, a landed cost module. We have another module here for landed costs. And what the module does is, is that um, it gives you um, capabilities uh, which are used within the transport industry, okay? So if you have, uh, if you are doing maybe, for example, fuel, if you are within the fuel transportation industry or the fuel uh, trading industry, then this is a module for you, okay? So where you'll be able to manage your trucks, uh, keep track of uh, voyages, voyages are like shipments, okay? And then folios, folios are like trips and then trucks. So you maintain your trucks, you maintain your trucks and then you load the trucks, the trucks leave the soils, move to the destinations. And then as they move along, of course, there are shipping charges, transportation charges, and then you invoice the, maybe the transporter, maybe if the transporter is a separate entity, all those, that, that, kind, of, uh, that kind of business setup. So for businesses which are in that kind of environment, then this is their module, which is also in DFIS 5, but then is not there in Business Central. We have another module, uh, which is called um, uh, the service management module here. For the service management module as well, uh, it gives uh, an additional layer of uh, uh, processing uh, within the service industry. For example, if you, if you do, if you do, if you have a business, okay, if it's an entity within um, a setup, maybe within uh, the service industry, for example, uh, if you do transformer maintenance or servicing, 
then this is the module that will be applicable. This module is not there in uh, Defense Central as well. I think uh, I'll finish with the production control module, and then I'll hand it over to my colleague Steve, uh, then to be able to sum up uh, the session for, from the business central perspective. For the production control module, uh, in DT65 Finance and Operation, this module comes out of the box with all the functionalities that are required when you're processing um, manufacturing transactions, all the way from raw material management to toolkit consumption, uh, to reporting the quantities which have been processed within the production orders to the end product, which then will be shipped to the market. So I think uh, with that, then I'll, I'll beg to stop and hand it over to my colleague, uh, Stephen Gee. Uh, lastly, uh, sorry for that, Steve. Uh, lastly, we have supply chain modules. Uh, for finance and operation, supply chain modules come out of the box, all the way from purchase requisition, a request for quotations, which are here, sourcing and bidding, and then all the way to the PO. So we start from the uh, purchase requisition here, we go to the request for quotation, and then to the purchase order, GRNs or goods receipt notes to the invoices. So in finance and operation, the procurement modules come out of the box with all the capabilities. But then I know in Business Central, there are some additions or extensions that you have to do to be able to meet these functionalities. For example, they don't have the sourcing and bidding capabilities. Okay, yeah, so uh, let me stop at that and then hand it over to uh, my colleague Steve. Thank you, Hezbon. Um, I believe the team is uh, still there. At least you can also be able to chat if you have a question on the chat. I'll just be brief on my side. Uh, this is uh, just a brief one. Uh, as we were doing the comparison, we realized there are different kinds of uh, modules that now are maybe in the business, uh, are in F and O, but they're not in Business Central. And ideally, what we wanted to capture is the, the different kinds of modules. Look at the module of the expense management. You find the way people request for petty cash or they request for like impressed is not well advanced or is very shallow in Business Central. Not to undermine that still the Business Central can have an add-on, like in our uh, entities, we have also been able to build an add-on for that end-to-end -end and link it to the business central. Then we have the list of assets or the lease management. This is uh, where you have the, as the leasing, the aspect of the leasing. Fixed asset is there in uh, business central, but we lack the lease management, which is more advanced in the finance and operation. The credit management, something either to mention is that uh, f and as it's structured is for the bigger market. Just for the information of the people is largely for the bigger market and large organizations. Not per se, it goes up to subscriptions of more than 20 uh, users, or else maybe Business Central can go from five users up front. All are based in terms of different uh, subscription, their subscription based, maybe for the SaaS in Business Central, if I know is fully on cloud. So these are just the items that you need to point, uh, to point out. Even when you get a customer and you're selling, you also need to say, yes, if I know has this, uh, you need to have more than 20 users because of the large capacity of it. Thanks to Microsoft for bringing Business Central, also to cater for the small, uh, medium enterprises. And with the small, medium enterprises, Others may not need all the modules that are there in the FNO, but if there is an add-on, then we uh, can put it on and then add-on on the business uh, central. Credit management is one uh, item that has been mentioned. In advance, I'll not even go further. Then on manufacturing, business central has a manufacturing, but it's not as much advanced as uh, the one in, uh, business, uh, in the FNO. And, uh, 
To note, Business Central comes in two versions, the Enterprise and the Premium. So if you need to purchase the one that doesn't have manufacturing, you purchase. But for F and no, it comes full board. Either you'll use the module or not use the module. So it's a choice between when you need to purchase a Business Central that has manufacturing or the one that doesn't have manufacturing. For budgeting, yes, budgeting is there in a Business Central, but is not from the scratch of either planning. As he mentioned, planning from departmental level. You have a procurement, they do their plan, finance do their plan, regions do their plan, then they submit for up workflows, and then it goes up to the level of consolidation. So it's something to note in budgeting, maybe from uh, other features that will come, items will be added on. But we have still been able to do uh, the budgeting module and be able to add on the different kinds of dimensions that is there and also to do the controls. Then uh, maybe something he, he didn't uh, fully mention, but uh, it's good to note. There's human resource in finance and operations that comes with the modules. It's a bit rich, unlike uh, in business central. f and has the uh, human resource that contains recruitment, compensation. We have uh, items like talent, the ones that you interact with in terms of uh, interaction with, with it in the LinkedIn and all that. But in Business Central, you will fully build an add-on of HR. Uh, uh, ideally, the two ERPs were not uh, in human resource, they were not rich for the, the, this market. It's more fully of the US market and the other regions of the European countries. So it's something to note that uh, is there on uh, uh, Business uh, Central. Then uh, can go further. We have the fleet management. This is how when you get a company or a partner, maybe that uh, you want to partner with your company that runs fleet management and you want to implement, then we finance and operations has a full uh, fledged module from the requisition of the vehicles, the assignment of the vehicle to the different drivers, the different routes, different locations and all that information that you may need to get from fleet management and all the different kinds of reports that are applicable to it. Um, maybe to mention in, uh, in, finance, in business central, ideally you don't have the module. And that's why I said we need to understand which market do we sell for business central and which market do we sell for f and o. Which enterprise are we talking about? The small entities, let's give them um, business central, but when they need an add-on, then we can build on it. Uh, there's still the service management. Service management is when you're dealing with different kinds of uh, uh, transaction in terms of maybe servicing of machines, servicing of uh, like in an industry setup, and you have a service uh, side, like when you're doing uh, items like motor vehicles, items like uh, transformers, they go for repairs. You need to have that kind of module that has the servicing. You understand which type of items have been put in into the machines and quantify them. It's a fully fledged module in uh, finance and operation and uh, still can be built if a customer or a client will like it in business central. And others is like on the vendor portal. Uh, vendor portal is ideally not uh, for the vendor portal collaboration. Uh, it's fully fledged in the business center, it's fully fledged in F and O. And uh, in business central, we just build an add on and maybe you input it on it. And then you'll be able to, it's a separate kind of an entity. But for fully vendor collaboration, that for an enterprise that we like all that, then the F and O, it's a learning process. We need just to understand the different kinds of the modules that are featured in the different ERPs and know the right markets and uh, maybe for them. Then we have the transport module. The transport module now, it's different from the fleet management because transport modules also caters for the different kinds of uh, levels. It has the routing part. We also understand the 
the management of the different kinds of vehicles that we have, and it's more detailed in terms of managing uh, the transport or even the transport end of an industry. Then uh, we continue and we talk on the transportation, uh, the procurement to pay method. Uh, ideally, like in uh, Business Central, uh, you have the requisition worksheets. You don't have the purchase requisition as it comes from the client. Purchase requisition, RFQ, and uh, RFQ LPOs or LSOs into invoicing, but you build uh, an add-on to it. Uh, I, I think on the benefit of time uh, so that you can give people the, Q, the time for Q and A's and maybe some interjections from the team. Uh, on conclusion, you can reach us uh, on Impact Business Solution for more information. We deal with the different, the two uh, kinds of uh, solutions, the ERP for small, medium, and the ERP for the enterprise uh, entities. Also, you should deal with other different modules for Microsoft Dynamics, uh, modules like CRM and all that. Then uh, ideally for question and answer, it's time for it. You can do it on the chat. You can raise your hand and you can still ask on that. And we wish to thank the team and the Dynamics team for giving us an opportunity to also uh, share with you the different kinds of uh, functionalities in the business central and the finance and operation. Thanks to you, moderator. Thank you so much, Jesbon. I think that has been a great presentation from the end. I can see a number of questions are flowing on the chat. Uh, probably we can pick a few as uh, time will allow. So I had seen someone had risen his hand up. I think it went back, so probably maybe we can take the questions on the chat. And the first question is on. Um, are all the modules standard or custom in F and O? Tesbon, maybe you can respond on that. Yeah, uh, thank you. And I was uh, trying to put my hand up to be able to just inform that there are questions on the chat, but I think you pick them up quite quickly. Yeah, uh, all modules, uh, standard or custom in FNO. Yeah, the, the ones I've showcased, they are standard, all of them. Okay, thank you so much. Um, a question from Fred, do you have payroll in FNO? How do okay. you compare human resource in both FNO and BC? If you can okay. respond on the two. Yeah, I'll respond on the first one. I, I think the second one was tackled by my colleague Steve when he was talking about comparing HR in both systems. So let me talk about payroll. There is a payroll that comes out of the box in f and o, but then uh, it doesn't really suit our African market, for example. So sometimes we develop extensions. At the moment in f and o, we developed an extension for payroll which works for, for the African market because then the one that came out of the box could not uh, fully with the African market. All right. So whatever we normally F and O comes with the standard, then it needs some customization to suit the uh, the available market, right? Correct. Good. I hope uh, Fred has gotten that. Uh, there's a question from Sangi. How easy is it to customize or add functionalities? That's from Asera. Yeah, I think I uh, also take that one up. up. Uh, how easy is it to add or customize uh, functionalities? Uh, I want to say it's easier uh, in F and O compared to BC. From where I see it, I've interacted with both systems. It's easier. So you, of course, through uh, through extensions. So you extend an existing functionality. For example, if you want to add a new form, you go there mm -hmm. and then uh, pick an existing form or where you want to insert your form. And then mm -hmm. through Visual Studio, you insert your form and then push a package or those changes from the development server to the test server and subsequently to the production environment. Okay. I hope that's well answered, Masera. Uh, from end. The other one was from George Indale. Does it allow interaction with external vendors and customers? 
Yes. Uh, Steve also mentioned, my colleague Steve also mentioned on that. It yeah. has uh, a portal. It has an out of the box uh, portal for the vendors as well as the customers actually. So we have uh, both vendors. There is a there is a module there called vendor collaboration module, which I couldn't showcase in the interest of time. But then the okay. portals are there for the customer and the vendors out of the box. Okay. Uh, John Lagoso, does the cost? <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, I think John basically wants to know whether if uh, BC normally comes with a number of modules, whether if she just decides to use one, the, the cost of license will reduce. Uh, John, if I got the question right. Okay, uh, has Bon maybe can respond on that? Uh, are we making reference to BC or FNO? Yeah, in this case. No, she, this she's on BC. I think for for BC, Steve, maybe Steve, you can jump yeah. in. Yeah, maybe. Uh, thanks for that question. Yes, the as I mentioned, uh, uh, the enterprise, the F, F and O, has a limit of even the named users that you have to be at least more than 20 users subscribed. So that means also the cost is higher, unlike on the uh, business central. Business central is a bit lower because even the users that are needed are not as many as, you're not limited to 20 users. You can go from five users and above. So the cost ideally comes down. OK, thank you for that. Uh, do you have authority to pay here after procurement process is done? That was a question from Fred again. OK, uh, let me check that one quickly. Uh, yes, you have what you call the vendor payment journal on the AP side and customer payment journal on the AR side for doing uh, inbound and outbound payment processing. Okay, Manuel is asking how can I can integrate the system to fit my business? I don't know, maybe you can make clarity on the kind of business he's referencing to. And also on the integration, I think you can also clarify well, what does he mean by integration? You know, from the system perspective, mm -hmm. the integration could mean something else. Yeah, uh, Manuel, if you can hear us, you can make that clarity. What language do we use in F and O? How can I use the, the program in performing my business activity? My business is in computers and electronics. Okay. Excuse me, you're, you're a bit faint. We didn't get your question clearly. Yeah, I'm saying, uh, how can I use the program uh, in performing my business activities, which is dealing in computers and electronics? Okay, you have another different application with, with you that has that, and you want to integrate it with the, the F&O or the BC? Yes, yes. Okay, then the system, because it's a Microsoft product, uh, it integrates with the different uh, systems depending on the different, either through APIs or other kinds of uh, integrations. Uh -huh. So we just need to understand uh, which platform uh, is used in your system, then we can integrate. And then we just uh -huh. need to mirror down to the modules that are needed, uh, featured in FNO or in BC. I'm using Java. Java. Yeah. Yeah. Has, has I think probably you can pick that later and have a detailed discussion with the manual. Maybe if okay. possible, I can maybe explain the kind of a system he has, yes. so that you also weigh out and see if it's a, a system that you're able to integrate with um, uh, BC or FNO. Super. Probably depending on the APIs that are, are supposed to be exposed from the two ends. Okay, super. That's okay. Uh, based, based on your experience, what are some of the challenges you have encountered in the implementation of F and O solution? Okay, uh, the cost. <laughs> the cost is high, <laughs> so it's quite difficult when you try to uh, justify uh, why uh, F and O is quite expensive compared to BC. 
Okay. So I want to say that is uh, the biggest one. Then the other one is uh, F and O is highly scalable. Highly scalable. You can you can create any functionality that you want. So when the users get to learn that, they can uh, you know they can imagine like they want a robot. <laughs> I'm just mm -hmm. trying to explain. <laughs> yeah, like they want a robot. You you know they give you a very complicated requirements because they know the mm -hmm. system can be customized to suit that requirement. I think those two. Okay. Thank you. Let's take the last question and then there's a link that has been shared there. I think you're all invited to join. That's a platform where we normally have uh, discussions and interactions. So maybe we'll I'll suggest because of interest of time, we take the last question and then the other question can be uh, posted in the group. And uh, I believe we should be in a position to pick them up. So are you able to print journal after posting? and bank reconciliation. OK, yeah, uh, let me respond to those ones very, very quickly. Are you able to print journals after posting? Yes, you can print before and after. So the system gives, it has quite an, a high level of flexibility. And uh, bank reconciliations, yes, you can print even before. You can print prior and after. And we have an additional, uh, I know this one is also in Business Central, the automated or advanced uh, bank reconciliation. So after the reconciliation, you are able to print the the reconciliation summary or the reconciliation reconciliation reports, and even before. Sorry. Thank you so much. We had agreed that to be the last, but I'm seeing there was only one left. So uh, maybe I request that you kindly clear it up. Uh, okay. Meanwhile, uh, I request the team to join the group. The link has been shared. How is uh, is it easy to upgrade from BC to F and O? <laughs> okay. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Maybe, sorry. Maybe I can come in. But I believe that these two systems are totally different from one another. Maybe an upgrade to from BC to F and O is a full implementation of F and O. The only advantage you get is the licensing bit. Uh, maybe if you are you have pay, been paying the license in BC, then in F and O you can be given a uh, lesser cost. But it's a purely new implementation. Okay. Yeah, I think that's clear. I hope uh, John has gotten that. And uh, these, I think that might make. I request that make that makes the end of our meeting. Uh, with me and my colleagues of Francis Matera. Uh, James Ndale and uh, uh, Sharon, who are colleagues. I left there something from the end. I request that uh, we, we come to the closure of the meeting. Maybe they can just say hi, Ndale. Okay. Uh, good evening, Tim. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chacha. Uh, 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 for uh, for working us uh, through uh, uh, this uh, solution, uh, Chacha together with the Kugi uh, Impact Team, we are very very happy. Uh, the session has been very very interactive. Uh, we continue uh, to learn uh, the solution. I don't know whether maybe you can maybe create a demo environment and share the account with us so that we can also be uh, interactive uh, uh, with finance and operation. Maybe Gugi. You can answer on that. OK, we can look into this, but uh, ideally, being partners of Microsoft, you can, uh, there's a, a possibility that you look for a sandbox with Microsoft. They give a test environment for that. But for the ones that is given to the partners, ideally, it cannot be shared to other people for now. Then does the sandbox have all those functionality like one for the clients, maybe? Yeah, like even when you're doing certifications for F and O, you're given a sandbox for testing for all the functionalities that are in built. Okay, yeah, I think that's good. Maybe you can change that information now to maybe to Yeah, we can that. discuss further on the okay on the learning part and then you can be able to see how well. Ah, thank you so much, Dali. Yeah. Yeah, I you, know that Sharon is still with us. 
I know Francis had done the introduction bit, so for the interest of time, unless Sharon is around, say hi. Otherwise, I'll. Sharon. Some of you might have booked out of the meeting, so this guys, I would just thank the team for such a, an insightful presentation. And uh, let's keep interacting and having such session more often. Thank you. And uh, the meeting is adjourned. Bye.